There has been some misinformation about this and a lot of fear. So I want to hear from your perspective, your version of what happened at this nuclear power plant and the status of it today. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, there was a lot of fear. And some of what I'm going to say about the timeline is definitely with hindsight, we know more about what happened. Um, the plant is safe. We know from the IAEA it is in operation with one out of the six units. But what occurred last night was the, you could say it was the peak in three days of escalating interactions between uh, Russian forces and very angry locals. The plant's located in a city named Inergodar, energy's gift. And the locals are very proud of their plants, like everywhere in the world, and they didn't want to give it up. There appeared to be some kind of clash between Russian forces and people outside of the plant, outside of the, um, you might say, the nuclear safety area of the plant. There was a flare that went off, very bright lights, um, what looked like and crowd dispersion uh, munitions. And later, there was video of some armaments of some kind found on the unguarded or the unarmored crosswalks outside of the plant. So what occurred was a fire that we can see on the video in an employee training center. Fire was started somehow. Um, firefighters put it out. The plant remained in operation with one of the six reactors on. That reactor had 60% power. And when the sun came up, we had uh, news from IAEA that they had been in contact with the plant on the ground with the professional operators. And the plant went through the night and uh, in the morning was under Russian control. Now, Mark, there was a tweet last night from Ukrainian officials calling this incredibly dangerous, also saying if it blows, it could be 10 times Chernobyl. Was that accurate? And just how dangerous was this? Um, that was absolutely inaccurate. Uh, these plants cannot go off like Chernobyl. They are not 10x Chernobyl. They're not 1x Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a radically different type of plant with no containment zone. These plants are reactors, small reactors, inside of incredibly thick, more than one meter thick concrete knit with very, very strong and thick reinforced steel rebar. So that the, it was never going to go off. That was always false. And if there's any nation in the world that would understand the difference between Chernobyl and the reactors they rely on every day, it would have been Ukraine. Don't want to question motives, but that was uh, it seemed grossly irresponsible from my perspective. And certainly that's the headline that captured people's attention. I fielded inquiries from young parents hysterically wondering about their child, their unborn child, as far away as Sweden. And I've had to say, nope, first of all, false, can't do that. That's wrong. And I've had to walk people through the steps of how this facility is not in any way, shape, or form capable of doing 10x, 6x, or 1x Chernobyl. So what is the real danger? If Putin and Russia capture these nuclear power plants, just how dangerous is it? What should we be worried about? Well, each of the plants should uh, has, has a value of electricity production in the tens of billions of dollars over the next few years, right? So it's not clear that the Russians would intentionally damage the plants that are the same type that they operate um, over the border in their country. So it's not clear what they would try to do to damage. But let's look at what the safety situation would be if during some struggle over the control of the plant, something happened. Well, first of all, the heavy, thick concrete domes trap anything that goes wrong inside. Uh, a very intense bombardment, more than crashing jet planes into these reactors. They can, they can survive that quite easily. So something immense would have had to happen to cause those things to vent. These are not even the same design of reactors like in Fukushima, for example. So what would have had to happen is with a complete loss of offsite power, let's say the grid collapsed, or a transmission lines were shot down, or the switch yard in the plant had a fire and the plant was disconnected, that would lead to immediate shutdown of any of the reactors that were still on. I mean, even a shell landing nearby would lead to an automatic shutdown just from the seismic sensors, earthquake sensors. Then after the shutdown, emergency safety procedures would come on. This equipment would protect the plant unless that itself were specifically targeted and interfered with. So uh, in the end, there's 
uh, many defenses. We call it defense in depth in nuclear from the inside, from the smallest inside of the reactor all the way out, increasingly massive and strong to survive just about anything. And that's okay. what we would have almost certainly seen in this case if there had been a, a direct bombardment.